All right, everybody, I told you I'd do a video on it, and here it is. Let's see if our uh, old blue 1976 Ford F-250 high boy. Uh, I've owned this truck since 2006. So that's 15 years I've owned this truck. I drove it for probably about a year, two years, roughly, after I bought it. Uh, bought it from my uncle. Loved the truck. But it's been sitting since eh, about 2008. Uh, it's visited many homes, sitting in many yards. Um, yeah. So we're going to try to get back down to it, see if we can get her running. Uh, yeah. So I got a battery. I got Earl over here with a battery on it. A charger charge up the battery battery that I had for my trailer over there uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because the battery's so dead that the chargers that I have won't start charging it so I had to put it on something that would give it charge from dead so Earl's over here doing the work for me getting some uh, juice put on it we already went ahead and went over to the auto parts store this morning Got some essentials, some oil, spark plugs, fuel line, fuel filter, clamps, some mother's mystery oil, carb cleaner, and you know, the PB blaster because you never know when you need a little bit of a helper. So, let's see if we can get over here and get the old blues hood open. This is, uh, <laughs> A lot of the stuff you guys y'all are gonna see is me, young, stupid. Doing stuff that's just stupid. You as a, uh, so, 30, so 20, late 20s. A lot of the stuff was 28, 29 years old. Really didn't know what I was doing. Then I'm gonna redo, like, I cut the core support to try to make room for radiator because I pushed the radiator forward because of the steering box I put in it and then I cut you know stupid stuff like this yeah I'm an idiot what can I say so oh crusty yeah. yeah let's put y'all over here real quick behind put y'all on the back of Earl oh let's see can you see there yeah now this is where the little bit of the wrench helps. Get some PV blasters, see what happens. Maybe that'll help the modifications not fall off so much. You know, I've never liked those freaking springs they put on this thing from the factory. Or help with the latch, so let's see if it helps with the hinge. Oh, yeah. Get all of us out of sight. Woo! Yeah, 
avoid it. This ain't good. I don't see a. get y'all over here and so y'all can see what I'm dealing with. I'll tell you one thing I don't like. I'll tell you again, this is, I was 30, 29, 30, 28 years old when I did this stuff. I mean, it's got a good bones. It's a 390 big block, uh, a Mallory ignition. Yeah, but I don't know if y'all could see that sun is kind of hindering me here right down there yeah that's a sparkling hole that dirt dauber has built its nest and guess what sparkling right there yeah I'm an idiot so what we're gonna do is try to get I grabbed the little core of the shop vac I got I think we're gonna try to Turn it on, stab it down in there, and see if I can get the, you know, see what this side looks like. This side ain't that bad. Got a little bit of leaves down in there, but not as bad as the other one. The other problem is, is the, it hasn't had a carburetor on it in probably 10 plus years. So, as you see, the fan is gone. Radiator shot. Still got the hoses. But see, this is what I did as a. You can see that. I put a box down here. I put this box in because the old timers told me one of the old timers told me to put this box in. It's a four bolt box. It's supposed to be a stronger box for the 250s, but. It sits too far forward and it hits the radiator. The radiator is actually supposed to be uh, right around here. So me as a dumb kid, I figured, well, just move the radiator forward. Well, move the radiator forward. You gotta cut the support. Well, I'm like, I'll oh, just cut it, move it back, weld it back in. That's nah, not the way it goes. So. We're going to probably be ordering a new radiator for it. Uh, you can see, and again, that breather's even gone off the valve cover, so hopefully, yeah. Like I said, it's been rolled back and forth in my yard. i got a rope stretched in front of it. A little lawnmower, just so I can mow underneath it. doesn't look like it's been sitting here, but it has. Got some modifications happening on in here. A little bit. It's not actually not too bad. Cab corners on these old trucks used to rust out real bad. This one kind of rusted out. You can see a little hole right here. And then this is just dirt. But it's not actually that bad. The bed is actually not even bolted down. Uh, I actually added a B&W trailer hitch to it because I wanted a gooseneck hitch for it. Modified it. Had a buddy of mine weld the ends of it. So that way I knew it was strong. This is the stupid 29, 30 year old. This was a filler cap. So instead of me welding it in, I just bondoed over it. Yeah, it's stupid. This is where the emblems go. Instead of filling in the holes like I did, I just put bond over it. You know, stuff like that. Fun stuff. So here's the back. The bed's not in bad shape. It's the first like... 10 foot in, not 10 foot, 10 inches in. It's a little rusty, but all in all, it really ain't that bad. The bed's actually in good shape for as old as it is and how long I've let it sit. You know, them tires have been on it since I bought it. So them tires are 2006 and they still hold air. Yeah. <laughs> There's the wiring stuff I got for it. Some HVAC because this is this is the model that come with the uh, AC. And back then I wanted AC. I still want AC, so we're gonna put AC in it. 
eventually one day. Started to do a little bit of the, back in the day, the sound deadening stuff, but this stuff is so old. I never put it down, it's, it's lost all of it. There's still some of the clips. Yeah. Speaker wiring. There's the dash panel for it. I think there's even more parts in here. Yeah, some of those, some of the lights, the seat belts, stuff like that. I'm sorry guys, it's lighting. The sun's horrible for me. But again, cab corners, usually these things are just shot on most trucks, but these are actually really good shape. We got a little bit of here we're gonna have to fix. Probably just cut it out here remake this piece I know it's got a weld right here but we'll see about see if we can get some parts get this fixed sand it down other than that I mean it's not in that bad shape I predicted worse but again this truck's been sitting for dude 2006 this truck set door still shut nice you got a lot of surface rust any good body guy can clean up, fix. Wish I could find the the uh, the uh, yeah, lid because it had a painting on it. The original owner before my uncle put on it, and it was like a mirror of what this truck was. When he owned it, which was probably 70s, 80s. I don't know what's that. When I find it, I'll show it to you. It's pretty, cool. it's pretty cool looking. He had a camper topper on the back of it, lights all up here. He had a compressor in the back, air horns, and you know, stuff like that. Back in 70s, 80s, you know, that was new age stuff, so. Enough of a walk around tutorial. Let's uh, let's see if we can uh, make this thing run today. All right. So what we got here is Aldebrock Performer 600 CFM. We're gonna slap one here. Let's see what uh, see if we can make it turn over. I wanted to put something on it first before we turn it over. That way if anything's flying around, I can kind of catch it before it does fall in there. Too short, too fat for this stuff. Get the bolt and the nuts here. You almost, that's so far up in here. You almost have to crawl in here to get in there. To reach it. Yeah, that's all that radiator is shot. I can see it splitting right here. Oh well. That's what happens when you let them sit too long. Alright, so I poured about, I don't know, a couple quarts of diesel fuel down in there. I didn't turn it over or anything. I'm just trying to wash out the pan. Try to. So let me pull this. See what we get out of this. Hopefully it looks more like diesel fuel. Oh no, see there's it smells like diesel fuel. Yeah, I'm glad I did that. Where's this water coming from, man? That is so nasty. I 
think I'm going to do that again. It smells like diesel fuel. I think I'll do that again. And, uh, and then pull that plug out. Yeah. All right, take two on the uh, diesel fuel. Like I said, I didn't turn it over. It just put it in there to try to rinse the pan out. Let's see, what do we get? It doesn't look like diesel fuel coming out. I'll tell you that. So nasty. So I would let it sit here and drain, but I want to get fuel or uh, oil back in it and around and lubricating everything as fast as possible. Like I said, I didn't put a whole lot of diesel fuel in it, anyways, but. You see the nasty stuff's coming out, man. That's so nasty. But I kind of figured I had nothing to lose. Oh, well. Take that down a little bit. Pour some oil down in there and see if we can get it to fire off. All right, all right, guys, we got some decisions to make. We, uh, let me tell you a little backstory of this. The reason I stopped driving it way back was I was starting to get oil in the water, not water in the oil, oil in the water. So all the oil was going in the cooling system. Um, and these FE blocks, they that's a common thing for them to do in, in a cracked head or cracked block. Um, usually if you blow a head gasket on a normal vehicle, you get water and oil. Not on this case because they don't oil the same as a normal conventional block does. The oil at galleys are actually share the same space as the head uh, bolts. Anyways, so that's the reason why I quit driving it years ago. But I wanted to see if it would crank over, crank up for me, and at least run. It did run then. But I wanted to see if it would run now and tear it apart and rebuild it. But I found something I don't like. And it kind of scares me a little bit. I like to see it crank up and run, but I don't think it's going to. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about right down there I don't know if y'all can see it on the uh, between where the block meets the head there is a little bit of water so if I turn it over I made me a little switch because I got tired of going in and out of the truck turn it over you can see watch you'll see water come out of that crack right there <laughs> So that's what I'm talking about. That's the most I've got it to turn over, actually. Or actually crank up, I mean. So, I got a little decision to make. Either we, one, do an engine swap on it, like a newer, modern engine. No, I'm not putting an LS in it. I can't bring myself to it. it drives me crazy when people put a Chevy motor in a Ford car, Ford truck, classic. It drives me nuts. But, we can do a, a Cummins swap or a Power Stroke swap. Do I do that or do I stick with the old FE motor 390? I, you know, 
I'm kind of partial to just leaving the old big block in it and seeing what we can do about getting it running. But I'm not against, totally against diesel swapping the thing. Um, so let me know what y'all think. I, I think we're going to, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little torn between what I want to do. I like to see the old girl with the original motor, like I said. But let me know what y'all think. I know I said I ended this video earlier, but we're ending it now. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, like the video. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.